All right, let's take a look at number six now. Um, we have to do an implicit derivative here, right? So let's write our equation down. The reason we have to do implicit derivative here is because our function is not y equaling some formula in x, right? In this case, we have x's and y's all mixed together. And that's uh, the sign that we have to use implicit differentiation. So here's our formula. Let's apply the derivative to both sides. So this would be d dx, the derivative with respect to x of 1. And let's see what happens. Well, to do the derivative of this first part here, we're going to have to use product rule. The derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. And uh, this factor is left alone. I'm using product rule right now. And then I leave the y alone, and I do the derivative of hyperbolic sine x, which is close hyperbolic x. Now I have to come to this derivative of over here, which is also a product. Uh, the derivative of x is 1 times this second factor left alone. Then I leave x alone, and I multiply by the derivative of this factor. Well, the derivative of cos hyperbolic y is actually sine hyperbolic y. But since it's a y derivative, I have to remember to multiply by dy dx. Remember that the derivative of cosine is minus sine, but the derivative of cos hyperbolic is actually just sine hyperbolic. So there's no minus sign here. And how about, and it's equal to what? The derivative of 1 is just 0, right? Good. So the strategy now is to get all the terms with dy dx on one side and the terms without any dy dx is in it to the other side. So why don't we leave these two terms here? I'll bring the uh, dy dx to the right to the front there. And these two terms, which do not have any dy dx's in them, I'm just going to bring them to the other side. All right. The reason we collect all the terms with a dy dx on one side together is because then a dy dx becomes a common factor. And we can pull it to the front. And that's going to help us isolate for dy dx. This side is just recopied again. Now, so it's it's like um, if I divide both sides by this quantity right here, I conclude that dy dx is this over this. And that's the derivative. That's the implicit derivative. Notice that in this derivative, there's x's and y's floating around, right? Whereas usually with derivatives, it's a formula that's completely in the variable x. Um, the next thing we have to do is actually put some numbers in here. Notice since there's x's and y's floating around in our derivative that um, we actually need to emphasize that the derivative is not only at x equals 1, but the y value is also important too, right? And fortunately, they tell us that. So in our derivative now, our goal is to replace x by 1 and y by 0. And that'll give us the answer. So let's see what happens. I'll use this notation uh, where I write a line. So dy dx, when I put in the point 1, 0, that gives me uh, minus 0. So I'm replacing my y by 0 and the x by 1. Cos h1, cos h0, over sine h1 plus uh, 1 times sine h of 0. So what happens here? Um, well, 0 times this is just 0. And so the only thing that survives on the top is hyperbolic cosine of 0. Um, sometimes I write brackets here. Sometimes I don't. It doesn't matter. Sine h1, that's going to survive. And sine h of 0 is actually equal to 0. And 1 times 0 is 0. So that just goes away. So this is what we have. I guess to make any more progress, we kind of have to remember the formulas for hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine. Um, hyperbolic cosine is equal to this, e to the x 
plus e to the minus x all over 2. And what about hyperbolic sine? Well, hyperbolic sine is basically the same thing except with a minus. So with these formulas, we can actually figure out what hyperbolic cosine of 0 is. The reason I want to do that is because of this. And just like just like the normally, what is the cosine of 0? It's 1, right? And the hyperbolic cosine of 0 actually also turns out to be 1. It's uh, if, we've, if we calculate it, it's e to the 0, which is 1. e to the minus 0 is the same as e to the 0, so that's also 1. So we get 2 over 2, which is 1. And we also have to figure out hyperbolic sine of 1. What is that? Well, it's going to be e to the 1 plus e to the minus 1 over 2. And uh, we don't have to write the power of 1 there. So the way that we're going to make progress uh, to finish this question is just to plug in these values into my expression up here. So finally, the which is what we want, the derivative at the point 1 comma 0 is equal to, like we saw up there, it's minus cos h 0 over hyperbolic sine of 1. And the reason we went through this little discussion right here is so that we know what to put in for those values now. Cos h of 0, as we figured out, is just equal to 1. Sin h of 1, as we figured out, is this expression, e plus e to the minus 1 over 2, right? Let's clean this up. Um, this is the same thing as minus 1 times the reciprocal of that, right? So this is minus 2 over e plus e inverse. Now, um, what's the? there's a little trick to simplify this. Let's multiply it by 1, okay? But I'm going to multiply, I'm going to write 1 in a strange way. I'll write it as e over e. You have to agree with me that e over e is just equal to 1. And we know multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, so I'm justified writing this equal sign here. Uh, let's see what happens here. When I multiply these two together, I just get minus 2e. On the bottom, though, when I multiply, what happens? Well, e times e is e squared. And e times e to the minus 1 is e to the 0, which is 1. So this is just plus 1. So I hope that's one of our answers. Um, it is, is it? No. I have e squared plus 1. Oh, you know what? I made a silly little mistake here. Look at this. This is a minus sign, right? Why did I write plus here? So I'm sure you guys caught that. This should be minus. This should be minus. Let me do some small corrections here to get the final correct answer. This is minus. And uh, these are minuses as well. And then, of course, uh, these become minus. So we have minus 2e over e squared minus 1. And I think I saw an answer up there that looked like this, right? Those are the same, of course. Let me double check that. Yeah, so I think the answer is A there. So it took a little bit of work, but we got it.